Well, Darren, you are um, the epitome of the entrepreneur, so who better to write a book about entrepreneurship than you? So what I'd like to do is let everybody know, in your words, what is the entrepreneur roller coaster? So um, really what it is, it's the inevitable, but unexpected and terrifying emotional up and down that an entrepreneur goes through when they step on the roller coaster car. Um, the reality is, is that and it's unfortunate, 66% of all small businesses fail. So I wanted to figure out why. I really went on an expedition the last year and a half to, to figure out what causes all, all this failure. And what I found was startling because a lot of the, the, the books that are out there, the reports that we hear of why businesses fail, they, they talk about it being outside factors. Uh, but they weren't outside factors. It wasn't capital, it wasn't competition, it wasn't technology. In fact, they were internal factors. And they weren't economical they were more emotional. So we see in magazines and news reports and you know Netflix game changers and Bloomberg shows all these fantastic rosy pictures of entrepreneurs who have had these fantastic successes and so we are inspired to launch into our own endeavor and then all of a sudden we are blindsided by the emotional upheaval that we go through when we start as an entrepreneur. A really great way to, to understand this is I have a friend of mine who's a CEO of a very large company in, in Salt Lake City. Okay, He's Mormon. And he was saying when uh, he was just a teenager getting ready to go on mission, that before he went 6,000 miles away from his home, never having been out of Salt Lake City, the elders called him in, sat him down, and told him every awful, horrible, nasty thing that somebody would say to him when he got 6,000 miles away trying to do his mission work. And he said, if they hadn't done that, if I had gotten 6,000 miles away from home and I heard that for the first time unexpectedly from strangers, he says it would have devastated me. I would probably have never recovered. But instead, when they said it, I was able to respond with, you know, they told me you would say that. Isn't that funny that you said it just like they told me you would? And they were emotionally bulletproof. And really that's what I want this book to do, to warn as well as prepare, make you emotionally bulletproof, and then equip you with the essential skills. You gotta know how to sell. You gotta know how to recruit top talent. You gotta know how to lead. And you need to know how to uh, produce high levels of productivity and then draw the best out of other people. And so those are the essential skills that are also taught in the Entrepreneur Roller Coaster. Darren, I have another question for you. In the Entrepreneur Roller Coaster, you smack people on the head. Well, figuratively, of course with it is time to join the ride as an entrepreneur. So why is it now time to join the ride? Well, um, we're living in an epic opportunity that is unseen in human history. And really it's, it's been brought about because of technology. Really what it's done is it's obliterated all the, the levels of control. So there used to be just a few people in the ivory towers of large corporations that had control. They had control of distribution. If you controlled the, the few square inches on the major retail store shelves, then you control the market. It, it was game over. Nobody else had access to the marketplace. Uh, marketing, if, if you had the big budget to do the big TV, radio, print campaigns, you could basically control the conversation. Well now, through your fingertips, you have access to a global marketplace because of technology. And, and you even take something like capital, it was once controlled by a few people. Now you can crowdsource, you can kickstart, and you can get started with, with so little money. So I started a company in 2000. And uh, I put in a bunch of my own personal money and I raised $3 million to start this company. That same company today could be started with five to $10,000. Same company. Now, that company that I started in 2000, failed. All $3 million gone. The great thing about today is with five or $10,000 a piece, you can start, fail, start, fail, start, fail, and then ultimately end up creating a fantastic success. I mean, technology's changed the game. I mean, it's a tectonic plate shift that has taken place and it's an extraordinary time to be alive. There's a guy that I um, interviewed for success called Ken Fisher, and he wrote this book called The 10 Roads to Riches. And, you know, there are a variety of different ways of getting wealthy. You can marry it. You can steal it. You can inherit it. Uh, you could be a sports star or entertainer. 
But he said, look, a lot of people put an investment in their kids becoming an Olympic athlete, a football player, uh, the next Tiger Woods, the next Roger Federer. The reality is, is that your chance of your kid becoming wealthy by being an entertainer or a sports star has a rounding error of zero. I don't care how talented you think your kid is on the football field or on the lacrosse field. A rounding error of zero, those are bad odds. And if you spend your whole time trying to become that and then you fail, you're done. It's game over, you're back at zero. He said the one path, entrepreneurship, is the only path where you can fail and fail and fail and fail, as Richard Branson did so many times, and end up wealthy. So if there's ever been a time and there's ever been a place to put your efforts, it's now and it's an entrepreneurship. Darren, out of all the entrepreneurs that are out there, why you? Why is it you that should write the book on entrepreneurship? Well, uh, I started out like most people start out. I started out afraid, uh, nervous, without a clue. I, I had no idea what I was doing and I flailed for quite a bit of time before I, I figured it out. I, I, I had no experience, I had no training, um, and really no guidance. And I did it mostly wrong for a very long time, which is how I figured out how to do it right. Uh, I graduated with a PhD in the School of Entrepreneurial Hard Knocks, really. I mean, I, I've got the, the scars to prove it. So I wanted to write this book to help save people lots of unnecessary pain and to significantly accelerate their success by helping them do it right the first time. So with the, uh, the role as publisher of Success Magazine, it has given me an extraordinary opportunity to, to, to meet, study, or present the stories of the greatest entrepreneurs on the planet. And having access to that kind of knowledge and then condensing it down to what's most essential, what's most important, what, what have been the catalysts that have caused these extraordinary successes. And so this is the, the best and most essential knowledge that people need to be a success as an entrepreneur, particularly in these fast changing and incredibly dynamic times. Well, I've known you for the past four years. And in that time, you have constantly talked about two different people. One is your mentor, Jim Rohn. The other is your hero, your father. So I know that your dad actually switched from being a employee to an entrepreneur. So how did watching your dad go through that, what did you learn from that experience? Yeah, security was a big deal to my dad. Um, his father, who he had great reverence for, worked for the same company for 40 years. His mom uh, was a meat cutter, same job for decades. And even when he was a university football coach, he had a boss, you know, the head coach in one organization or the booster club in another. And um, so venturing out on his own was not something he was ever conditioned to do and had no reference point for it. So it wasn't until his, uh, his mentor, which is former football coach, um, launched a real estate career. And really encouraged and proud of my dad that said, you know, you could do this. And my dad didn't believe it for a long time. It really took the very gregarious and charismatic uh, pushing and prodding, cattle prodding, um, to really encourage my dad to do it. He started out part-time while he had a job at a pneumatic tool company. And then when he started to make a little extra money and that money became more than he was making full-time as an employee, he launched fully into his own business uh, with his mentor. And it was really his mentor that made it possible, um, not only to make him believe that he could do it, uh, but also be a guiding system for him. So that's one of the great motivations for why I wrote this book, is if you don't have that mentor to tell you you can do it, I wanna be that mentor. I wanna tell you you can do it. If um, you don't have the guidance of what to do and how to go about it, that's what this book can help you with, is to be that guiding tool to help you be a success as an entrepreneur. Well, how did the observations of your dad's journey impact you? Well, now I had a different reference point. My dad was an entrepreneur. Now I had a whole sort of different uh, perspective about what was possible for me. And, and as kids, what's the one thing we want to do? We want to be like our parents. And we want to make our, our parents proud. Well, my dad was an entrepreneur. He was figuring it out on his own. And so that became a, a very real option. I was living and seeing and witnessing that option. So um, I owe 
great debt of gratitude to my dad for having sort of paved the way. The second thing that I learned is hustle. He had to hustle because mm -hmm. there are many times I remember where it wasn't until he could cash a commission check before we could go to get shoes right. for school. And uh, he was making ends meet. He had three kids. He had three kids by the time he was your age. He had me when he was 24 years of age. Three kids by the time he was 33. So um, he had to hustle. Thanks for telling everybody my age, by the way. So, um, yeah, it, it showed me, number one, that I could do it. And number two, if I wanted to do it, I needed to hustle and, um, and really dive in full headlong. And, and that's, um, those were valuable lessons. And I hope that I pass those lessons on to everybody else. You can do it. And uh, if you're going to do it, you got to hustle. In the Entrepreneur Roller Coaster, you bring about this really great perspective of switching your passion on. So you talk about the four different ways of doing this in your career, what you do, why you do it, how you do it, and who you're doing it for. I thought this was very, very interesting. So um, how does that help you succeed today and how has it helped you in the past? So my, uh, my motivation has evolved over time. Uh, I will confess that, you know, in the beginning it wasn't uh, as virtuous as it might be today. Uh, when I first started out, um, I really just wanted to impress my dad. You know, he was my idol, and so I just wanted to make him proud. And um, in the book, I talk about sort of the coming of age moment when, uh, when I finally sort of graduated from that being my primary motive. And then when I was in real estate, um, my motive was competition. I just wanted to bury the competition. I wasn't a really nice guy when I was in real estate because I was, I was a, a tough competitor. And um, so that was my main motive. I wanted to win. And then when I met Jim Rohn, it was, it was growth. He would always say, see what you can do with all you've got. That the, that the purpose of this grand adventure is personal growth and realizing your potential. So that became a big part of my motive. But today, um, it's really about contribution. Um, using success to create significance. And that's the reason why I'm so passionate about what we do at Success. And it's the reason why um, I went through the hard work after your prodding to, um, to sit down and, and, and make this book possible because the mission is we want to onboard 10 million new entrepreneurs who succeed over the next three years. I think about every one of those being like my dad. And, and it changed the life of him, his family, and it changed my life because he became an entrepreneur. Every one of those is one of 10 million. So that's, that's an exciting motive for me. That's what drives me, gets me out of bed, and makes me want to champion this cause uh, from the mountaintop is to think of the, the number of lives and then the number of families that that could ripple to across the planet. It's exciting. You have uh, some interesting chapter titles throughout your book, and uh, my favorite one is the five strategies for embracing your freaky nature. Yeah. <laughs> I, I thought you'd like that. Yeah, of course I would. <laughs> so why don't you just tell us a little bit about that and how that's helped you uh, throughout your career. Well, if you look up in the, in the dictionary, the definition of freak, it is a person who is obsessed or unusually enthusiastic about a specific interest. Well, that's every entrepreneur. Obsessed or overly enthusiastic about a particular interest. The reality is, is that if you step out um, of the herd, so to speak, where everybody is doing what society has taught them to do, trained them to do, educated them to do, which is to go out and be a dutiful employee. If you step out of that herd, you're joining the less than 10%. So that's freaky. It's kind of like a story that, um, that I heard and I often tell about crabs, right? Crabs have this amazing agility, which is why they can get up and through any rock formation or through coral. So they can basically escape any trap that you place them under. However, we pull them out of the ocean in tonnage uh, every single day. And the reason is they share a quality much like us humans. And that is, if you want to capture crabs, you get a big uh, cage and you put a little crab feed at the bottom and you lower it to the bottom of the ocean. A crab comes along, sees the feed, jumps in the trap, starts munching on it. Another crab comes by, sees there's some food, jumps in the trap. Another crab comes by, looks like crab Thanksgiving, jumps in the trap. Even after the food is gone, more crabs will come by and join the rest inside the trap. Now they're all 
trapped. If one gets the great idea to say, hey, there's no reason for us to be here, I'm leaving, and starts climbing up the side of the trap, the other crabs will knock them off the wall as they try to escape. Really? And if they persist, they'll actually break the arm off the crab so that it can't climb any further. If it persists even further, by the force of majority, it will actually kill the crab so that it can't escape. And then it's pulled out of the ocean and it's feeding time on the pier. So this happens to humans a lot too. When they try to uh, escape the herd, step out of traditional societal roles of corporate ladder climbing, um, humans have a tendency to break your, the arm of your ambition or even try to kill your dreams. Now, they don't do it physically, of course, but they do it with innuendo or sarcasm mm -hmm. or doubt or ridicule or mocking or laughing, trying to make your idea or what you're wanting to do seem ridiculous or impossible or scary or you shouldn't be doing it. You have a good job. You should just be happy with your position in life. And the reason for this is that if you escape the trap, you've proven to them that it's possible. And they don't have the same courage that you have to make the climb out of the trap. And so it's much easier and safer for them to knock you off the side, to stifle your ambition, to make fun of your dream, than it is for them to step out of the trap themselves. And so that's why being an entrepreneur, you have to embrace that freaky nature because you are going to be called and you're going to experience some freakiness. That actually is, is very interesting because when we were going through, um, what is this book going to be about? The one thing I did not want it to be, and I, I know you didn't want this to happen either, was it to be some motivational fluff yeah. book. Because yeah. people need to understand what actually is going to happen to them along the ride. So um, you introduced uh, this character, this person, that um, during one of your businesses, um, she came to you and she was wanting to be an entrepreneur and she had the money, but you knew that she was not going to be a success. So you actually told her you didn't think it was a good idea and you, you lost a sell. That, that was money that was gonna come to you. So knowing that, knowing that you did that, it, it really impacted you during that moment. I would love for you to tell people what are the great things that you need as an entrepreneur, but what are the things that entrepreneurs have that they need to work on as well that could actually hold them back? In that situation, uh, I was in a, uh, having to, to meet sales quotas and so was probably pushing too hard. And I realized it. It was a moment of clarity. And I knew that this woman um, didn't really want to do what it took to be successful. She just saw the, the rosy picture that I had painted and I knew what it would take uh, for her to make it a success, and I knew that that's not what she was signing up for. And I could have taken the money and gotten the sale, but that was a moment of integrity for me. And that's when I realized, you know, maybe this isn't the path that I want to pursue. Now that I know that I'm capable, can I use these capabilities to do something really positive? And so that was that, was that moment, that story. But I, I believe that all humans are capable of entrepreneurship, all of them. It's natural to be independent. It's natural to be industrious and goal-oriented, but it depends on your upbringing that, to, to determine your perspective, okay? So, like, I grew up with an entrepreneurial father. My wife grew up with uh, a father who was an employee. The idea of entrepreneurship was the, the last thing to be considered. Get a great education. She's one of seven. They all have high, multiple-degree university educations. And so that was her framework. So the idea for her of being, even being an entrepreneur is difficult, but you can change that because inside you is that spirit to be independent, to be industrious, to, to want to be in control of your destiny. But you need a new perspective. You need new framework. You need to see other people like you who have stepped out and have become successful. That's part of what it is that I'm trying to do through the entrepreneur roller coaster is to show you through my experience and through the experiences of some of my friends and some of the people you can see in Success Magazine, they started out just like you, scared, nervous, not knowing what the heck they were doing. And they saw that ultimately with persistence and some hustle that they could be a success. The only difference between whether one goes on and becomes an entrepreneur and does it successfully and the one that stays back into the herd and does what 
society has been training them to do is courage. It's courage. And if giving you the framework of other people who've been where you're at, who've s stepped over the line, become courageous for a moment to get started, get in the car, yes, it will be terrifying. Yes, it will be thrilling. Yes, it will be exhilarating, but it's worth it. We had um, Steve Wynn on the cover of Success Magazine recently. And one of the things that he said that, um, that riveted me, he says, you know, as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, there will be dark days. There will be lots of dark days. There will be more dark days than there will be good days. But the few good days are so good. And it's so worth it. And that's really, in a nutshell, the experience of being an entrepreneur. Because it's living. It's sort of experiencing the zenith of what's possible, creative, and capable for you. And those moments, is, uh, those moments of, of, of seeing that in yourself, nothing like it. So I was reading recently that the U.S. Treasury just announced back in August that the economy is strengthening again, and it is actually 6.6% larger than it was before the Great Recession. Strongly cited in the report is that joblessness, too, has fallen from October 2009, when it was at a peak of about 10%, and it's somewhere now in about 6%. So what do you think is a correlation between the opportunities for entrepreneurs and that stat? Well, we all know that entrepreneurs drive economic growth and job opportunities. Mm -hmm. I mean, the statistics are um, they drive half of all private employment. Um, they create half the domestic product. 60 to 80% of all job growth is created through the starting of small businesses. 52% are home-based. So you got a person in their second bedroom or basement um, that's responsible for 30% of exports. Um, and there's 16 million of those. It'll grow by 64% over the next four years. Now, other statistics, if we're getting into statistics here, is that 1.3 billion will be working virtually by 2015. Um, That's incredible. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 just in the last six years, micro businesses, and these are businesses that are one to four employees, created a net of five and a half million jobs. So these are micro businesses. Mm -hmm. That's where that job growth is coming. Large businesses, these are companies that have 500 employees or more, lost 1.8 million jobs. And a lot of those jobs aren't coming back. What people don't realize is that a lot of these large corporations are doing more with less. They're hiring back their employees as independent contractors, meaning what? They're hiring them back as entrepreneurs. So I really encourage that companies need to figure out how to create entrepreneurship, meaning how do they allow their employees to either have an entrepreneur mindset, train them in the mindset and the skill set of entrepreneurship internally, or even provide opportunities where they can have their own individual projects inside the framework of the larger corporation that they partner with on some upside. So that there's, there's really this independent, um, I'm in control of my destiny opportunity, even inside of large organizations. So, but regardless, they're all gonna have to have the mindset, the emotional resilience and the skill set that an entrepreneur has that we talk about in the entrepreneur roller coaster. Well, you know, in the entrepreneur roller coaster, you mentioned that in the number of millionaires actually has grown by two million during 2013, and then by 2015 or 2020, it's actually going to double. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty incredible. Um, I was intrigued by your statement that almost all of them, almost all of them, are going to be entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. and that's a very, very different mindset than what we have right now, which is where we think that a lot of these millionaires are coming from investments that they're doing inside of the market. So why do you think that that is going to change so significantly? Well, first of all, um, a lot of people think that the economy is bad, these are troubled times, crisis, war, and all the rest of that. That is just the perverted view we see through the very small lens of news media, that there has never been a more prosperous, abundant time in all of human history that's taking place right now. The number of millionaires are proliferating. Wealth is up by 68% all over the world. These are incredibly opportune times. So that's number one. Number two is a millionaire is not much money anymore. <laughs> I mean, really, uh, it used to be a big benchmark, but it, it's not so much anymore. I mean, the stock market, you get a 6 or 8% return, a 12%, and you know, you're, you're the wolf of Wall Street. Um, you 
attribute your after-tax salary to the stock market at 6, 8, 12%, it's going to take you a really long time mm -hmm. to become a millionaire. Uh, whereas if you become an entrepreneur, your rate of return could be 300%, 5,000%. I mean, look at some of the companies that have been started with little to nothing that have become, we can look at some of the multi-billion dollar companies, you don't have to. The companies that become worth several hundred thousand, that become worth a couple of few million dollars because they scale, they provide a value to the marketplace and the marketplace rewards them in multiples. You can't get that in the stock market. It's just not possible. So I always say bet on yourself before you bet on playing, gambling in the stock market. We all know particularly with recent history, how all the money you put away for 10, 20 years can be gone like that. But the one thing you can always have is the skill development, the character development, the emotional resilience that you've built inside yourself to go create multiples of value in the marketplace through your entrepreneurship. So bet on yourself before you bet on the stock market. So speaking of betting on myself, I have an idea for me, you know, to be an entrepreneur. I've had this no. for like two no, years. The answer is no. <laughs> You cannot leave I knew success. You, would say that. <laughs> you cannot leave success. This is for everybody else but you. No, no, please continue. Yeah. So it would uh, it would fill a hole in the fashion industry. So that's that's my idea. But my my struggle is that I have this great job with success, and I have a, a young family, and they're supported by me. So I can't necessarily just quit my job, and I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to do that. That's too much risk. It's it's scary. Um, but I think about, okay, so if I wanted to spend a little bit of time investing in this business, um, you know, what do you think about that? What do you think about starting part-time as an entrepreneur while working full-time as a employee? Well, first of all, I think you'd be excellent because you're such a fashionista, I so I encourage you. But the thing I will um, amplify is mm -hmm. I'm not a believer in leaping and hoping that the net will appear. It's an American myth. You bounce, it's ugly. It's not something anybody should ever do. I don't recommend going all in at the sacrifice of a family. Um, one of the things that uh, I learned from Branson is he said, you know, never let your bet on a business or an entrepreneurial endeavor, if it fails, have you living in your car. And one of his most important principles of entrepreneurship is mm -hmm. always protect the downside. If, if, if you read his story, um, when he started the airline, he made a deal with Boeing that in a year, if it didn't work, they would buy the plane back from him at the price that he paid. In other words, he wanted to make a go of it, but if it didn't work out, he wouldn't have sacrificed everything he built up to that point and put his family in jeopardy. So always protect the downside. And, and when you're young, you know, you can kind of throw it all against the wall and see what sticks. And if it doesn't work out, you can sleep on your friend's couch and eat ramen noodles. But if you've got a family... Yeah, it's a lot different when you have a family. Yeah. When you've got a family, it's, it's, um, it's not fair to them. Mm -hmm. It's not fair to them. You, you have a duty to uh, provide a life and a, a, a place of comfort and security. But at the same time, you can get started part-time. You can get started on the side. Jim Rohn taught me, he says, you can work full-time at your job and part-time at your fortune. And then when your part-time fortune becomes more than your full-time income, now you can, you can make the transition. And there's never been a better time because today you can start something with very little money. Um, you can test it. You can see if it scales. You can market prove it before you really have to kind of take a deep dive. So that's the reason why I also reiterate, these are the times of epic opportunity. What cost me $3 million in the year 2000 to start would cost five dollars to $10,000. You could take five dollars or $10,000. Start this on the side. See if it works. See what it needs to be iterated to change. See what market acceptance you get. See if you can get it distributed. And as soon as you see the traction and you start to see the cash flow and you get a couple of other people kind of working with you on it, it's easy to step over with it already fully proven that it will work. It's that really wasn't good. possible before. It's really good to hear that because a lot of people are just like me out there. They don't want to just quit their job, but that's what everybody's telling them to do. Yeah, if you want to be an entrepreneur, you've got to quit your job. No, that's wrong. Yeah. No, I don't, I don't recommend it at all. And it, it's too easy to get something started 
in very little time and very little money, go and get it scaling and growing and building. And you, everybody should have uh, a multiple source of income, right. really. I mean, so if you have a job that you may never want to leave, like you may never want to leave success ever because you love it so much, but you could also have a whole thriving sideline business that provides an extra layer of security as well as lifestyle for your family that, you know, you could do it in your very, very spare extra time that you've got, of course. <laughs> well, during this process of uh, creating the book, you know, one thing I pushed you for, and you, you did the same, is that you wanted to make sure that this was not just a book, but this was a movement, that there was an experience that came with it, because when you are an entrepreneur, you go through an experience. So what we created is this the entrepreneur roller coaster experience. And I'd love for you to just talk a little bit about that. Yeah, this is gonna be pretty special because it's the it's the first time really that um, I'm actually able gonna be able to spend time with people one on one. I mean previous I've done high performance summits where somebody had to pay fifteen hundred to twenty three hundred dollars and it was it was limited to only hundred hundred and fifty people. I don't do those anymore. Um, and 